The suspended lunge is the first of the leg exercises in workout one. So to begin with, we need to get into the TRX. So holding it to one side, you're simply just going to pick up one foot and drop it into the foot cradle. Now, to begin with, this is, requires a fair bit of balance. So you might want to start off with a support until you get used to the exercise. In this case, Randy's just going to hold onto my arm. As he goes down, what we're looking for is a nice, slow, controlled movement, going as deeply as we can. We're getting a lot of hip mobility here, as well as trying to get his knee to track directly over his foot. Now, as soon as he starts to feel comfortable, he can let go of the support and carry on. We've got great tracking with his knee over top of his foot. It's natural to have a little bit of variation, and that's really giving us a great, great impulse all the way up. His shoulders are slightly in front of his hips as he goes down in athletic position, and you can see he's using great gait pattern with his arms. As you progress, we'll do a couple reps a little bit faster, starting to add some speed, still getting down nice and deep. And to begin with, at the very high level, you can add power with a little hop. Let's do two or three of those. Straight up and down, straight up and down, one more. Beautiful. Now, it's quite natural for you to lose your balance now and again. Like I said, this exercise does require a fair bit of it. If that's the case, just put your hands on the ground, catch yourself, come back to standing, and continue on with the exercise. And that's a suspended lunge. The single leg squat is one of the most functional exercises you can do. And the TRX really gives us a great progression to get to it so we can do it without anything at all. We're using the TRX in this case just as a balance or support so that we can progress. Really what we want to do is have a light, light grip on the handles and progress to be able to have even some slack in the TRX, meaning we're being able to do it without any assistance at all. To begin with, we're going to lean slightly back against the TRX, making sure we lead the movement with our tailbone, so dropping the backside back, shoulders are forward, and going as deep as we possibly can. You can see as we go forward here, Randy's knee comes forward over his toe. He's in a great alignment to lead him into a good, strong single leg squat. We also don't have any rotation. It's very important not to have any rotation in his knee. His knee is tracking over top of his toe perfectly. So we look at his upper body as he comes down. The shoulders come forward, trying to get almost a parallel line between his tibia here and his torso there, and his eyes stay up on the anchor system. Now to progress this, because this is a very challenging exercise, first I'll show you the regression. You can have one foot just on the ground here, just to add some stability and take a little bit of a weight off the movement. We'll do a couple there like that. I showed you already the middle movement. To, pro to progress it, we can actually add speed and tempo and up to power. So let's do a couple a little bit quicker. And at the top end, it won't be as deep of a movement, but there'll actually be separation. You can see he's driving straight off the ground. We're getting great ground reaction force, lots of action into the quadriceps. This is a tremendously functional exercise and will lead to great results. The sprinter start is another excellent functional exercise that really develops good power and single leg strength. In order to do it, first of all, we definitely need to extend the TRX to its full length. Once you've done that, you're going to want to tuck the handles right up into your armpits. Essentially, this allows you to lean all of your body weight against them without overtaxing the shoulders. Many people make the mistake of being in a, in a half chest press position. This is very, very difficult and definitely won't allow you to get the most from this movement. So once you've leaned right into the TRX, you want to get into essentially a sprinter's position like you were coming out of the sprinter's blocks. You can see Randy's gives about, there's about a foot, foot and a half between the front and the back foot and his shoulders are aligned directly in front of his hips. This exercise is all about what's happening with the front leg. The back leg is really just there for balance. It taps down to, to maintain stability in between, uh, in between each repetition. However, it's all about the front leg. So starting off very, very slowly, coming straight up and down. Now in easier progressions or slower progressions, you can pull that front leg all the way through as Randy's showing now, but you definitely want to get used to the idea of kicking it up behind because that's going to allow you to do the faster, the faster speeds come later. In the program, you'll see a repetition with a comma and another repetition. The first rep is basically done at this slow starting speed. After we've got this good technique, we can start to move a little bit faster. And in later stages of the program, you'll see a third number which represents the ones we're going to do with power. In this case, we're actually getting separation from the ground and note that Randy's footprint stays the same, meaning his foot lands in the same place each time and now you can see that back leg is kicking up behind. 
What another mistake that is common is to actually load this back foot. So people will come back, put the foot on the ground, and then see that backside comes up. It's no longer aligned behind the hips and it's going to take away from the exercise and the experience. As long as you keep everything in alignment, you'll find this is an incredible exercise that demands lots from the single and front leg. That's the, the sprinter start. The hamstring curl is a great exercise, obviously, for the hamstrings, but as well engages our glutes and low back extensors. So it's a fantastic and actually much more functional exercise than you might think. To begin with, we need to make sure we've got good dorsiflex toe position, so pulling the toes towards the knees is important. The regression for this exercise is to leave the tailbone on the ground and just pull the knees back while exerting force down into the heel loops. Now, to progress it up, what we can do is change arm position, either moving them from my palms down to on our chest or sternum to even straight up in the air above us. But where most of you will start is with your palms on the ground and your tailbone actually off the ground in a bridge position. Here we've got lots of lots more force onto the heel loops. We'll come back and we definitely want to make sure we get good range of motion all the way so we're really targeting and to the plane right above our navel. From there, we can go through that same hand position progression, and at the very upper end, what we can do is lead this action with our hips. So driving the hips up high and pulling underneath, maintaining a good dorsiflexion the entire time. It's a great exercise, and you'll find that it really taxes the hamstrings, glutes, and low back. The hip press directly follows the hamstring curl through the course of the workout and is very demanding for both hamstrings and glutes. To begin with, and most importantly, we want to make sure we start off position with a 90 degree bend at the hip and the knee. We need to make sure we keep that bend at the knee throughout the entire exercise, so getting a knee position right here. Again, dorsiflex toes are important. Now what we want to do is take the hips and drive them straight off the air, and at the top of the movement we got a straight line from knees to hips to shoulders. As an alternative to having your heels in the TRX, you can actually put your toes in the TRX and some really prefer this configuration. So Randy will put his toes in here and we'll show you the same thing. Additionally, let's do a couple of these first. Again, straight up, pushing straight down in this case into the bottom of the loop, getting that same straight line at the top. Additionally, as a tweak, you can actually internally rotate, pulling those knees together feet out and driving this up, and most of you will find this much more demanding for the hamstrings, tweaking out some elements. That's the hip press. The hamstring bicycle is the final exercise in our hamstring series, and here we're going to work unilaterally. So we'll start off elevating our hips, making sure those toes stay dorsiflexed, and we're going to pull one knee in, followed by the other one, back and forth. Okay, we really want to have a good range of motion all the way through. Now to progress this exercise, we can go through the same sequence with our hands from flat to chest to straight overhead. To regress it, we can just drop those hips down, put the tailbone on the ground, maintain down pressure, and pull in one knee at a time. Now, one of the most common mistakes that people will make here is to not maintain a balance or an equilibrium between the feet. So with the hips elevated, as one foot comes in, the strap will slip through. Very important, equalize the TRX, feet are right together and making sure you maintain a down pressure with a straight leg as the opposite leg comes in. You'll get a ton from this exercise and you'll find it's a killer finish to the hamstring series. The bicep curl is a tremendous exercise obviously for the biceps but it has a whole lot of other elements that are great. We'll go through them right here. To begin with we want to lean back against the TRX palms facing up and our elbows fixed in a high position. If you find while you're doing this exercise you're rowing in towards yourself, really engaging your back, we're going to be doing that a little bit later. You're taking away from this exercise. So elbows fixed high, you're going to pull your hands right to your temples or your forehead, keeping a nice high position. You can see we're getting a great contraction here in Randy's biceps, straight down and up, a supinated position is really getting lots from the forearm, forearms as well. The other thing I want to point out as we're doing this exercise, is here we've got a great extension of the back, good thoracic extension, and great stability going on here in his shoulders uh, with the rotator cuff as well as in his shoulder blades. Now if we wanted to make this exercise a little bit easier, we would just walk back a little bit, picking a shallower angle, and we could go through this in a much, much easier position. If we wanted to make it more difficult or progress it, we'd bring it into a really steep, aggressive position and get as many as we could here. And this is going to be challenging for even the hardest of you out there. Excellent job, Randy.
Now, one of the other tweaks we could do with it, and this is great because it adds for some good forearm extension, sort of to balance off what we did in that supinated position, is to use a pronated grip, or our palms facing down. In this position, we'll go through the same, exactly the same movement, pulling straight up to his temples the same way, tweaking out some of the helpers to the movement that we had when our hands are supinated. That's the bicep curl, and I'm sure you're gonna get lots of challenge from it. The tricep press is a great companion to the bicep curl we did a little bit earlier. To begin with, we're gonna start with our arms extended straight out and one foot in front. This allows us to self-spot, and if you're motivated, you can actually make the exercise more difficult using it this way. Palms are facing down, elbows are in tight, now, if you find that you're coming in too deep to your chin level, you may feel that in your elbows. If that's the case, bring your hands to a slightly higher position, and usually that feeling in the elbows will go away. So here we can see Randy's driving his forehead right to his palms and driving straight back. You can make this slightly more difficult by bringing your feet back. Now you've got more of your body weight leaning in, and you may have to make tweaks with your foot position. To make this even more of a progression, we can make the movement a lot bigger, and you'll see this happens in your program, where we're driving our arms way overhead and driving it down again. This is integrating both our chest and our lats and a lot of shoulder stability with that primary tricep movement. It's fantastic. Make sure your head stays up nice and high. You're getting a good core engagement and lots of work with your triceps. I'm sure you're gonna like it. The high rotation is a great rotational exercise for your core. To begin with, we're going to want to fully lengthen the TRX and configure it into single handle mode. We want a nice wide stance in just a, a comfortably deep position. So we'll get down in here. There we've got that wide stance. Now it's very important to ground solidly through the foot of the direction you're going to go to. And the opposite side hand is the one that's on the inside. So here we're going to rotate to Randy's left He's got his right hand on the inside. He's going to wrap over top of it. Again, nice wide stance, grounding through this foot, really engaging through the core and rotating away. So you can see this shoulder comes straight up. He's not overweighting this side or really transitioning onto it. Let's do a couple repetitions right there. Excellent. Now, if I wanted to progress this exercise, I'd just pull Randy a little bit deeper, giving him a steeper position using vector resistance, and he could do a couple from there, again, grounding hard through that foot. If I wanted to regress it, we would just basically shorten that lever length. Ideally, we, wanna, we want to really strive to have a nice extended arm position, but to regress the movement, we'd have a, a slightly bent arm, maybe 90 degrees at the elbows, and then we can come around, and that takes quite a bit of the stress off of the core. That's the high rotation, and I think you're gonna find it an excellent movement. The side plank is an incredibly effective and demanding exercise. And so to begin with, you're going to wanna make sure that you've got the ability to maintain just a steady side plank on the ground for 30 seconds. And Randy will show it to you here, with that arm straight up in the air and eyes up against hand. Once you know you can do that for 30 seconds, then we can move on to the TRX. So what we'll do with the TRX is you want your feet suspended in it with your top foot in front of the bottom foot, sort of in a heel to toe sort of position. And Randy's gonna show that to us in just a second. Now, we're working through the whole progression here. So to begin with, with your front hand on the ground, lift those hips up and just maintain that. If you're fine there, bring your hand to your hip and then straight up overhead, look as Randy's looking straight up. From here, we can start to add movement. So in this case, he's going to come under, looking for a hand target, and coming all the way back to me as far as he can. Look, we've got a great big movement here of his hip. Now, as we want to progress that, I can do it two ways if he's got a partner. One, he can come up, and I can drive him down. He's got to maintain that force. We'll do that one more time. The other way I can add an impulse is to push his hand around. He's got to maintain that. Push his hand around, and he can maintain that. And that gets to be very difficult. To switch over from one side to the other, you're going to want to always switch to the ground. Okay, if you switch to the outside, what will happen is you'll actually fall out of the TRX. In this position, you can see how much opening through the back Randy's getting, and we're not getting a sag, although as he comes down, his hips will come up. As he reaches up, it's okay to get that hip to come down just a little bit. In the later progressions, and this gets to be very difficult, we'll actually move up onto a hand really applying that uh, principle of instability. With a single hand balance, he can come straight up, reaching up, 
That's very, very difficult. And if you're really feeling burly, you can add that same reach under and pull up. Incredibly difficult. Randy makes it look easy. I know you're going to find it challenging and very effective. The final exercise for our core on the first day of their training program progresses across it. We start off with a suspended crunch. Now, depending upon how you feel about your upper body strength, this can be done either from elbows or from hands. It's really up to you. So let's start this one off from our hands. The suspended crunch, put our hands out here. All we're going to do is assume a push-up position. Now, if you have a hard time with this, you may be able to regress it even further and just work on a prone plank from the ground until you can do hold that for about 60 seconds. So here what we're going to do is lift our hips up nice and high, pulling our knees as close to our chest as we possibly can. Very important to get those knees up and making sure at the bottom of the movement we're not breaking parallel, putting all that stress onto our low back. Now, the next progression from here is called the body saw. What we're going to do is move to our elbows and assume that same plank position. Again, head is up, hips are nice and high, legs are back. What we don't want to see is any sort of a sag through the movement here. If you break plane through your low back, it's going to translate a lot of stress into your lumbar spine. Really find it difficult. So if you feel pain at all there, just stop, rest, and we can take it from there. Now, the body saw looks like we're just going to have a small movement back and forth. You can see most of this movement is coming here from the shoulders. Randy's doing a good job keeping his hips nice and high. Don't let the small movement fool you. It's very, very demanding for your inner core and uh, back and, and core stabilizers. In the later progressions, what we want to see is a combination of those two movements. So we'll preload it with that body saw and then fire up into the suspended crunch. Up in like that. Now, if you want to go to a very extreme end of it, we can actually do the whole thing from our hands. This is incredibly challenging. So, from our hands, we're still going to do that same body saw preload and drive up with a powerful knees to chest, suspended crunch. Make sure you don't get that drop down at the back of the movement. Very, very demanding, very, very effective. You're going to love this exercise, but get ready for it. <laughs>